just like basic of machine learning and yeah I'm just an engineer such a senior service as a government engineer and first this is my favorite quotation from my professor so basically uh, everything is about automation of information uh, so if there's no automation in our system there's no AI even not informatics so this is the definition of informa informatics for my professor okay basically there's two approximation for to find solution in the screen is always Uh, basically, there's two approach that we can approximate that we can use uh, to solve some problem. First is the analytical. The second one is numerical. Uh, the analytical is the exact uh, solution, and the numerical basically is approximation that we. Uh, we uh, the machine learning is one of the numerical solution. Uh, maybe in campus we know the numerical methods course. And for example, the analytic solution for integral uh, this function for minus x power two uh, uh, given x terhadap x if yeah, given. given x and this is the the analytical we just uh, create the integral the uh, range x one until uh, minus minus one to one. Then we put in the x to the function, and this is the result uh, 22 power 3. And the numerical solution is just like we have this function, uh, this is the graphic from the uh, this function, and we just try to create the trapezium. Is trapezium? Trapezium in English? Trapezium. Trapezium. Trapezoid. 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 Oh, trapezoid. Trapezoid. Some of trapezoids. And we try to calculate the area, the width of the trapezoid, each trapezoid. And then put the value to each function of trapezoid. Yeah, just like uh, y, uh, like that one. Size of wait. the trapezoid to the uh, something like this. This is the width of trapezoid for each trapezoid. Then we get uh, approximately the uh, width of all area is 7.25. Then we can calculate the error, and this is the error. It's just like we get the, 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 the solution, but the result is the approximation, not the exact. And this numerical method is just about machine learning method that we know in the book. Uh, no, there's several method, Newton Epson, Gaussian Indonesian, Gaussian Jordan, and etc. There's a lot of uh, method that can use uh, to model, to, to, to create the model from any case in the So basically there's a lot of uh, method that we can use in machine learning. And this is the machine learning definition from Tommy Shaw. The computer program set to learn from experiment E with respect to uh, class of class T and performance of T. So uh, the most important is experience, the data, data set, and we should to measure uh, the performance uh, when we uh, resolve the task T. So, and for some, uh, this book from artificial intelligence and modern approach the set there's two kind of learning first is the inductive and deductive just like I have explained to Ramon uh, before you remember uh, the inductive uh, learning is machine learning the deductive is the expert system so if deductive is about to use the general uh, model to uh, resolve some specific case but uh, for inductive is we try to create a general model from specific cases and then, okay, 
basically the machine learning is about how to create the model. The model itself is just like hypothesis. So it is like the uh, the artificial function uh, that approximate the real function. So we have the real function, for example, a doctor that have knowledge about uh, cancer. Uh, how the uh, patient can be classified uh, that have cancer or not? This is uh, the doctor has the real function, but it's hard to uh, uh, take the knowledge from doctor and implement to computer. So we create the uh, approximate uh, function uh, that can approximate the real function. So the fx is not fx accent is not the real function. And we count the error, so we minimize the error. Uh, we, we we try to get the minimum error by adjust all parameter that in uh, this uh, artificial function. Uh, there's two way we minimize the error or we maximize the likelihood. Um, I have one question. Yeah. So you said that there is a a real function, and but since we don't know the real yeah. function, we are able to yeah. approximate it. But given the data set, right, how do we know for sure that it will fit into a real data set, the real function? The real function. So we try to see the gap if we use uh, the. Uh, if we use the artificial function. Uh, we put the x and we get the y accent, mm -hmm. uh, the result from the artificial function. And we have the real y from the real function that we don't know, but the y function, eh, sorry, yeah, the y uh, result is in the data set, right? Good, yeah. So we try to see the delta from uh, y accent uh, minus the, y, the real y in the data set. And we count the error, we, we, we sum, we measure. Uh, using the uh, mean square error something like that and we see the, the effect of the error if the effect of error is small it see it mean the artificial uh, the artificial function have uh, been approximate enough with the other function no, uh, so my question was how do we know for sure that there is actually a real function which represents the data how, set? How we know that there is the real function? Uh, there is always a real function. There is always, there always real function. Uh, so I have some uh, perspective that uh, almost what we know in this world is stochastic, not deterministic. And the real function is in uh, just of the real, the real function, everything for everything, even when everything is uh, that have the real function. So we try to approach that function, uh, except for some uh, function that have been low, some like maybe gravitation. Uh, not gravitation is not low. Right? It's just like uh, I don't know. The gravitation is still uh, low. I think something like that. There's always a real function in the data set. Uh, randomly, I think we don't know, but we try to approximate the function. Okay. Okay, next. So, this is a, actually, this is our perspective of machine learning. If we try to learn about machine learning, we can start in some of this area, information theory. Just like decision tree and like ID3 and C4.5 is one of two methods that using uh, information theory area. And probability is like Bayesian, like bias, belief network, and etc. Graphical model, belief network, SMM, hidden Markov model that we use in uh, next recommendation system. Neural network and etc. Numerical uh, method, yeah, are just like regression, parametric regression. But actually, this method is have it is under it is under what it is under what join join intersection intersection this method have some intersection uh, part in uh, another area. 
just like Mira Network using graphical model to represent me in the network but actually it's just like new network method we just try to regress the regression the uh, gradient and the naive bias actually is probability but uh, for belief network uh, it method use the graphical model to represent the dependency of the features so we can start from anywhere but for information theory it's have a unique uh, condition because there's just several method that using information theory uh, for today i just we uh, i just explain about the decision tree and next part uh, will another method and tomorrow we'll edit three or four method we can we will explain and the taxonomy that we have new uh, this Supervised, unsupervised, and husband learning, semi supervised, and maybe now uh, have a viral keyword about deep learning. Supervised learning, uh, basically, we have the data set with label. With, we have uh, what? Two looks. Two looks. <laughs> Okay, for supervised learning, we have case that we have this class target. We try to predict uh, if a people will play tennis or not in this condition. So we have the uh, class target information. Uh, will the uh, will people play play tennis, play, uh, tennis or not? But in unsupervised uh, area, we don't have this class target. So the difference is just like that for supervised and unsupervised. Okay, and for reinforcement learning, uh, basically it's just like if you do the right thing, you give point, plus point, and if not, uh, we give the punishment that's reinforcement learning for each step uh, uh, of the methods and for semi-supervised uh, it is like uh, you have several uh, data that ha don't have the label the class target and uh, the rest is have the label so we try to optimize uh, by using we try to clustering or the, uh, use the unsupervised method to uh, uh, get the, the the model that can separate the uh, just like play tennis, uh, play or not. Uh, we try to split the uh, data using uh, clustering, so we don't use the uh, class target or label. Okay, then after that, uh, we try to classify the uh, unlabeled data, and then after after that, we uh, add the unlabeled data that has been labeled by the clustering to supervise algorithm. Uh, maybe confused or not. Okay. And the rest is uh, the, the last method, maybe about deep learning. Deep learning itself is about a uh, big architecture of the model. And for me, the deep learning is just about the stack of the method. So we use more than one method, or we use the stack of the method. Uh, for example, we can use uh, unsupervised algorithm to, to support the supervised uh, algorithm, but it's different with uh, the semi-supervised because the unsupervised uh, not classify the data; it just support the supervised uh, method. Or we use uh, a lot of supervised method or unsupervised method, just like uh, stack up. Uh, restricted Boltzmann machine, so we have a lot of uh, RBM uh, in uh, the network. It's hard to uh, imagine the algorithm. So this is just like uh, the uh, visual of the algorithm. Supervised, we have the uh, yes and uh, no uh, data and yes data. Play uh, play tennis and no play tennis. 
and then we try to classify the unknown uh, data condition. Unsupervised, we don't have any information about the label. Super and semi-supervised, we have some of label data and unlabeled data. Uh, deep learning, though. Okay, this is uh, some of another method, regression method, algorithm that we are explained by uh, Fala. And ensemble, basically, it is like the decision tree. Ensemble, uh, maybe about random forest, so it's a lot of decision tree in uh, one method because it called random forest, so it's a forest with a lot of uh, tree. Posterior and prior is about the uh, uh, probability algorithm uh, data distribution, something like that. Maybe uh, tomorrow we'll explain about that. And artificial neural network is regression algorithm but with a lot of gradient. Dimensional reduction, uh, some algorithm can be used for uh, dimensional reduction. For example, we have uh, 10 field, 10 features, and we try to uh, visualize the data, but the problem, we just, we just, uh, we just can see two-dimensional or three-dimensional uh, graphic, so we try to reduce the, uh, to reduce the uh, field using the dimensional reduction from 10 to three-dimensional or two-dimensional. This is the taxonomy. I just a lot of uh, algorithm and more than this actually. Okay, uh, oh, sorry. That's the last thing. And this is from another reference about four layer of data mining. This is the application, this is the task, of classification, regression, or clustering. And this is the model, this is a uh, tree, uh, this is a neural network, a partition, and this is the algorithm. Maybe C45, 43, car, vector vacation, or maybe deep neural network, uh, deep link network, and this is uh, k or something like that. And now, for the first method, is about decision tree. Uh, decision tree have a lot of version, just like AD3, C4, Point five R C C uh, R J four five random forest random forest basically uh, the himpunan himpunan set set of ID three R C four point five that's random forest so after we we have the decision from each forest eh, sorry uh, from each tree we do the plotting and the sentence tree is supervised algorithm so the data set should be have the target function plus fun uh, are the class label are the label and yeah in that time the session tree said uh, the methods are robust to errors but today maybe it's not good enough for uh, handling the uh, big error and the session tree can use uh, for unknown values but the problem is not really good enough if we have the missing value for this entry so uh, the decision tree uh, what we uh, learned today is about ID tree we use the First, uh, uh, first tree, ID three, and the statistics, the statistical component is entropy and gain. Information gain is uh, the parameter to see uh, which attribute that can split uh, the data to uh, each label or each class. Uh, which uh, attribute? have best contribution to split the data to to classify the data and entropy is to characterize uh, we try to see for example we see that uh, the data set is balanced or imbalanced the con of the uh, class yes and class no is balanced or it's not balanced something like that. if not balanced for example the 
uh, the entropy result will be one. Eh, sorry, zero. Zero it means it's very uh, in balance uh, data condition, and for one is it means uh, balance the condition the data set is balanced. Okay, this is the function. This is algorithm. So this is the output, but it's, uh, it's hard to see the algorithm. So, for example, we have the okay, we have this data. There is fourteen record in this data set, and four uh, features. And we have the class target or the label. Uh, no for not play tennis, yes for play tennis. And outlook have three values, sunny overcast and rainy. Temp have two, humidity two, and windy uh, two values. So we try to see which feature that have uh, biggest contribution to split uh, the data to uh, which attribute that have big contribution to classify the data to yes or no using the gain function so we try to uh, we count the entropy first is the entropy s Entropy S is mean the all entropy. We use uh, nine. That we have fourteen data and nine for positive for yes and five for negative or no. So entropy is ten for positive uh, and point five for negative. Uh, the function is this one. Uh, the probability the key is probability for. Uh, Yes, and this one is for probability for no, and then we multiply by uh, log uh, by basis two for probability yes and probability no, and the result is zero point nine. It means it's not balanced enough, uh, but almost balanced because it's convergent to one. The entropy for uh, all entropy, and then we use the all entropy, the S entropy. Uh, minus the for each uh, t is the uh, value <coughs> of the t is the features so we use the number of <coughs> features given the uh, label for example we have wine feature field wine uh, wine have two values weak and strong and then the S is this one and for uh, weak we have 6 positive and 2 negative for no and for strong value we have 3 and negative for uh, no <coughs> so we put the value to this uh, function we have 8 uh, even 14 for sorry, 8 8 for this week and 6 for uh, strong so give uh, 8 uh, per 14 divided by 14 and entropy uh, week we, we uh, count the entropy for week and we count entropy for strong so the entropy will uh, the entropy function will something like this so we use 6 uh, divided by 8 so this is the the sum of uh, weak data and 